Hey folks, Colin here from Something's Recording, and today I'm gonna to show you how to do punch-ins and how to utilize auto punch inside of Studio One. We're gonna be talking about punch-ins today, but before we dive in, if you're ready to take your vocal mixes to the next level and really start perfecting your EQ strategy, then I have just the thing for you. It is my ultimate guide to vocal EQ, and it's just a simple PDF that will walk you through EQing your vocals step by step to help you get polished and professional sounding vocals without any more of the hassle and without any more of the guesswork. It is a completely free guide, and you can download it below using the link in the video description. Now let's jump in here and talk about punch-ins. So we have a vocal here and we're gonna do a punch in on it. We're gonna do it two ways. So we're gonna do it without auto punch and then I'm gonna show you how to do punch ins using auto punch. So setting a loop and having uh, PreSonus Studio One do the punch in for you automatically, hence auto punch, right? But let me play you this little section of the song here so you can get an idea of the vibe of the track here. Here is going into the second verse of this track. We're gonna look at punching in the second line here. So first off, why would you want to do a punch-in? So say we didn't like that second line. We got all the way through our vocal, we've done our different parts, done a couple takes and patched them together, and then we got through here and there was one line here that we didn't like right in the middle. That's why we'd want to do a punch-in. Just punch in, replace that line, and we're good to go here. The way you could do it is we could just have a second track here, a second vocal track, and we could record a take singing this line and then just patch it in there. So let's try that. Uh, I'm gonna have to, oh, I got my rec track record enabled here. I'll probably have to lower my volume here on my mic. It's pretty cranked up for video recording. Let's leave it about there. So it's a little quieter here, but bear with me here. So we got our track record enabled. All we're gonna do is we're gonna record just the second line here and then we'll patch it in. So this is uh, one of the ways you can do punch-ins, and then we'll talk about the auto punch feature inside of Studio One. I probably have to mute my speakers here as well and switch to headphones here. All right, let's take a listen through the second line here. Turn the mic back up here now so you can actually hear me better. Okay, so now we have a take of this second line here and I can boost it up in volume here so it matches a little bit better, right? Looking a little bit similar there. Let me unmute my speakers here. And all we'd have to do here is go in. We can kind of see where everything lines up. Cut this piece here, cut this piece here. Do a couple cuts at the end. We delete this section and we just pull this piece up. So now we have a punch in here and we can do a little crossfade here. So in Studio One crossfades are X, so we click this half, click this half, click X, and that's where we get our crossfade. And then we just drag it over, pull it up a little bit, and let's take a listen to how that sounds. See if it's at least semi-smooth. <laughs> So that's one way you could do it. It's not the cleanest way you could do it, right? It takes a few extra steps than you would want. The other way we can do it is by using auto punch here. So we're gonna go back before we did our cuts and everything and get rid of the second track. And what we're gonna do here 
is we're gonna record and enable our normal track and we're gonna set a little bit of a loop here. So we can see where the second line starts and where the second line ends. I want a little bit of room here on each side of it. So we're gonna set a loop range and we'll go a little bit farther than we have to just so we have room on each side. So here's where our line starts, leaving a little bit of room beforehand. I don't wanna to cut too far into this line because I wanna hear this line before this line starts. And then a little bit of room afterwards here so we have, have some leeway with this line. Then you come down here, we got this feature called auto punch. Now the shortcut is I, so if we click I, you'll see this turns red. Otherwise you can just click it to turn it on. Now what this is gonna do is when I hit record here, no matter where I start, I can hit record here and it won't start recording on this track till we get in the loop range. So it's only we're gonna record this section here and then we'll be able to pull it and manipulate it to fade these two pieces together here. So we're gonna do another take of the song here. Turn my mic back down here. We got it record enabled. I will mute my speakers here. Got my headphones on. Just gonna pull this mic down so it's not so loud going and recording. And let's do a take here of the track. So again, record enabled. All we did is turn auto punch on. And we've got our loop set a little bit before, a little bit after our line here. So let's see if we can get a good punch in. Get my mic turned back up here. So you can see it only recorded inside that one loop there, right? After our loop ended, you heard our vocal come back in on the track. And before our loop started, you heard our vocal there on the track. Started singing a little bit before, so we had some, some extra edit points there. Let me unmute my speakers, get these headphones off. So now we can manipulate this vocal to get our punch in sitting right. And after you're done, you usually wanna turn off auto punch. So again, you can either click I, or you can just click this little guy down here to turn off auto punch. So we are a little quiet there. So let's pull this guy up in volume so it looks even with the rest of our vocal here. Now we can see if we have any space here. There's where our line starts. So let's pull this over. Now you usually wanna turn it into, oh, it started as a crossfade. Sometimes it doesn't start as a crossfade. And in that case, you can just click one side, click the other, X, and it'll crossfade them together. See how close we got there? That's pretty close. We can see where our original line started there. Let's see if we got something good enough there. Now they don't sound, they don't blend together quite so well because it's of course a different mic and a different take, different room. So a little bit of stuff there running through the mixing process that gives it a little bit of difference. Um, let's take a listen to this now and see what we got. Sounded good on the way in there, so you can see it's a little, we hear a little bit of difference on this, this line here than on this line. That's okay, like I said, different mic, different room, different day. But our punching is nice and clean here. We don't notice going into our next line, and we didn't have to create another track or do any patch-ins or anything like that. So let's get our, our ending here sitting nicely. Zoom in, make sure. So that's what I'm talking about there. You can see the hard end on the crossfade. Uh, that's because that's the end of this this piece of audio here. So we'll drag it over and you can use the zoom in feature down here to see if you go over any breaths or anything, which is pretty nice. So nothing there. We can go over as close as we want here. And again, click one, hold shift, click the other, click X, make sure it's a crossfade. And we'll take a listen one more time through this ending. Nice, clean punch -in. So again, those are the two ways you can do punch -ins. If you don't happen to have that auto punch feature inside your DAW, it's easy enough to just duplicate your track, record on the other track, so just record the line you need, and then highlight it and drag it up to your original track. If you are using Studio One, definitely try using out this auto punch feature. It's a nice, handy feature if you're just replacing a simple line or an entire phrase inside of a verse or chorus section. Pretty handy to have that just automatically punch in like that. And you can just set your fades and you are good to go.
I hope that was helpful for you. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you are ready to level up your vocal mixes and really start dialing in your EQ strategy, then I have just the tool for you and it is completely free. It is my ultimate guide to vocal EQ and you can download it below to start creating more professional vocal mixes in less time. Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.